was the administration's intention to bring your recommendation related to waterside at the fourth Tuesday meeting of April, and it has um, been able to sneak up on me, so we're here. With that said, uh, the purpose of the presentation today, which is very short, it's about 15 slides, is to provide you with an update on where we are with the uh, waterside recommendations, and there's no council action that's required at this time. Um, we talked a little bit a couple of weeks ago about the recent history. I won't spend a lot of time there, but uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, 2010, where there was a, a survey of about 3,000 residents, <clears throat> as well as in the uh, fall of 2010, there was five, you had five independent consultants come in and provide you with recommendations on what to do with the uh, water side. Two of the key recommendations then were, one, to turn it over to the private sector to manage, and number two, that whatever the city does, it should be a part of a greater waterfront strategy. Uh, with that said, in the uh, 2011 council retreat, I uh, provided you an update with the um, our findings that's related to Waterside with a re recommendation to go out with an RFP. The RFP went out this past October. We got the responses back in in December. There were five responders. We got down to the final two, HL Development and the Cordish Company, and today I'll give you an update of where we are there. Uh, just a brief overview, I think you've seen this a few times, but with the HL Development, uh, basically there's a waterfront conference center with a multi-level uh, park, pedestrian a walkway, a couple of hotels, a new office building, and expanded marina with the restaurant. Uh, one of the keys here is that in this particular proposal, the, re the uh, recommendation would have been to demolish the Waterside Festival Marketplace. Uh, Cordish Company, the proposal, uh, basically you have an open air development with a clear roof, uh, about 122,000 square feet of uh, dining, entertainment, and retail space. It was basically uh, provided to us as the uh, living room for downtown. It was a, an opportunity for the community to, to gather in this, what some call an entertainment arrangement. Uh, since that time, we had two additional consultant reports, and that's what I reported to you on two weeks ago. Uh, interesting enough, both of the reports suggested that each proposal could work. Um, so with that said, over the course of the last uh, two weeks, we have shared those reports with you and with the community so that you could have all the information available to you that we had uh, available to us. Uh, some of the feedback that we received over the course of the last uh, six months, and I'll just give you some of these examples. I believe you received these letters also. The uh, DNC basically said whatever occurs, we should have a well-defined vision statement as we move forward, and it should complement Norfolk in general. Uh, Revision Norfolk, I believe you also <coughs> received a, a letter there uh, from them with a couple of, uh, with n a number of, of recommendations but basically they kept coming back to that there is a waterside brain that we have with that building and adaptive reuse would be something that would be uh, special. <clears throat> Over the course of time again, uh, there's been this consistent message or a consistent theme of one being that the, uh, the property should be available to the public and the other being that the property should be turned over to um, the private sector in terms of management. And a reoccurring theme has been that whatever happens, there needs to be uh, family-type amenities. Uh, with that said, and actually building on the DNC uh, information that we received about this waterfront strategy, if you go back to the Huntley Partners uh, consultant report, one of the themes they came up with after numerous interviews with uh, individuals throughout the community is that they basically said that, Norfolk, you have Virginia's premier urban waterfront park and you can build on that. Um, basically, even in the RFP that we sent out, we discussed uh, that waterfront going all the way from the Wisconsin to Harvard Park. But in that report, basically, what we found was that there could be something that could act as a catalyst, not just for the waterside building, but for the entire waterfront. Um, and that catalyst would be consistent with the broader vision of the city. So with that said, I, I recommend moving forward with the Cordish proposal. That is my recommendation to the council today for a variety of reasons. 
One, some of the strengths of the quarter's proposal is there is no upfront cash. It also shifts the, the requirements of the, the, the fiscal and the physical requirements from the city to the private sector. It activates the waterfront, and uh, maybe more importantly, it actually expands the, the number of downtown restaurants and entertainment offerings. Back to the Huntley evaluation, one of the concerns was at the beginning is that if you had this type of catalyst, for lack of a better word, what would it do to Granby Street and what would it do to Collie and 21st Street? And basically, over time, if you go back to 2004, our market share of the uh, restaurants has decreased by about 20%. So in that study, basically, it, the recommendation was, or the finding was, that the market could accommodate the, the Cordish proposal without cam cannibalizing some of the existing restaurants on Granby Street as well as Collie and 21st. Some of the areas that uh, clearly we would have to address if you approve this recommendation of moving forward would be the number and types of restaurants. Um, I think it's not necessary to start so big. You know, there are opportunities to, if this is a true catalyst, there are some opportunities to basically grow into something that uh, you know, may be bigger. I think it's very important to keep in uh, mind the waters, the waterside marina. That marina has been a, a public transient marina, and the, I don't think it's wise right now to lose local control of that. Uh, the linkage between Town Point Park and the facility is important. The use, there's active use as well as passive use. And I think one of the most important things that came out of this study was that whatever occurs, there should be cross-marketing. It's not just a facility or it's um, you know, somebody from the private sector that's uh, now uh, taking over the, the water side the facility, but it's how can we have cross marketing between the DNC and also between fest events? So, once again, that we're bringing people from the outside to the city. Um, the financial overview of the proposal it's basically a long term master lease of about 50 years, $26 million of investment, but that's not including the tenant build out. And there would be some type of performance-based grant, which would include admissions tax, food and beverage tax, and sales tax, just those three. There would be no break in the real estate tax rate. I will tell you that this next slide, um, the selected negotiating points, what we've tried to do is um, call together all the information that we've received up to this point about what should be some concerns moving forward if you approve this with um, the Cordish proposal. And one thing I'd like to say is that you know, even if we use Urban Outfitters for an example, this would be very similar to the point we are with Urban Outfitters, and detailed discussions about any of these bullets could potentially harm a negotiating position. Um, we still want to have the best outcomes for the city, but again, these are some of the points that we have been hearing that we should be concerned with if you approve this, this recommendation. The lease terms and the length, um, you know, what type of minimum performance that there needs to be, what types of rights for us to terminate uh, a lease, uh, what is this, the structure of any type of performance-based grant in terms of any type of sharing of the revenues, um, in this case, whether it's, you know, admissions, sales tax, and food and beverage. Uh, again, to what extent can we incorporate local restaurants and have a local flavor into this proposal? Uh, the number and types of restaurants has been something that has come up. And then lastly, um, the security, what type of safety and security standards that we would have. Uh, the conclusion, uh, the, we, I believe the Cordish Company uh, does have the ability to be a catalyst for downtown. <clears throat> but I also believe that um, we don't need to give up on the um, discussion of a hotel conference center. If anything, the uh, Harvey Lindsay development has reignited that conversation. Um, if you go back to the other uh, consultant report, they truly believe that this is something that um, would benefit the city. Um, so if we're into that either or category, I don't, I don't think we're there. I do believe that there is still an appetite for some level of a hotel conference center. I will tell you that over this whole process, I've been dealing with the original um, proposals 
but all through the last couple of months, they have been tweaking proposals on, on both ends. I'll tell you right now that um, the Harvey Lindsay proposal has um, morphed into something that literally could be on that site with a conference center and a hotel. But I would go back to you know one of the things, if I didn't emphasize it beforehand, and you know, one of the driving factors of this recommendation to you is that it appears that uh, you know the, the building still has a lot of life in it, that the community still believes that there's something that could be done with the building. And if that as a, a premise or a foundation, if you're not going to knock the building down, then that would be reuse of the building. So I guess what I'm suggesting is that there's still, um, that proposal still has a um, tremendous amount of local participation. Um, it is consistent with what the other consultant study provided. And I do believe that that too could be, um, to have some type of hotel conference center downtown could also be a catalyst. So my recommendation is to move forward with the, the Cordish proposal. But again, I do believe that the Harvey Lindsay proposal has reignited the discussion of a hotel conference center. Okay. We scheduled about a half hour for this discussion. We can take a little longer. Um, the manager's made his recommendation. Anybody have any any questions? What we should do, and at least what I would propose in the council, we can do whatever the consensus is, is to maybe have a work session where we all talk about the Cordish proposal, uh, maybe what we like or what's good about it, what can be better, and then see if we can massage at least our discussions to give the manager some guidance uh, that would sort of, you know, we can all get our uh, hands around it. I, unless anybody here thinks the manager is out on a limb somewhere, I mean, on, the, on his recommendation, I think maybe he could use, we could all benefit from all of us talking at one point about what we like, and then at some point we need some public feedback, a little bit of, you know, that would help be helpful, I think. Well, I don't think the fact that we don't ask questions today is indicative of, of our preparation or understanding of this, and that shouldn't be misunderstood. I think he's just giving us his recommendation of the two, and there's literally tens of questions, hundreds of questions that go uh, from the police uh, to the issue of a performance grant that he mentions uh, that needs to be examined and discussed. But that takes time and homework. That's yeah. just, uh, that would take a considerable amount of time and preparation. Uh, and frankly, I'm not prepared to go into each of those today. I'd like to see some of the documents and the financial side of what you're, you know, and more specifics on the issue of the financial aspects you're talking about when you mentioned performance grants. For, I think for, we need instance, that. I mean, I think the proposal. Um, within the, the body of the proposal, there was the notion that there is a certain amount of debt on the waterside facility right now. It's four million. That's right. That approximately, and that they would be willing to take, they would assume that debt. Is that I mean, well, we can get into all of that, right. but I mean, I know that that will be a talking point. Okay. There's a lot to go on. Yeah. Are they, they're open-minded to small businesses being involved, local businesses? Yes. And, I think that's a huge part of it. And well, their proposal was a third small uh, local businesses, so if you could expand on that. Yeah, I think we need to mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on that. I, I agree that we need time, and I think a work study is a, is a good idea. But I, is there a time constraint here at all? I mean, are we are there issues that the Cordish needs to move on? or? No, not okay. at this time. Well, I think, uh, me personally, I just hope that at the end of the day that we don't tire tie their hands, you know, to the point that uh, it becomes, you, the goal was to bring people in here to know what they're doing. So at some point, you got to let people do what they do. I, I think that there's a process that uh, they will take the city through as a whole. They will go back and do, this, and do their due diligence in terms of meeting with the community and going through that process, the types of, types of, of uh, eateries, types of businesses that they want to see in the establishment. And a part of that is to incorporate uh, local uh, entities, icons, if you will, in the community into their establishment. So I would hope that, you know, as we have these conversations around the table, that you guys will, will, will take a trip and look at it so you understand how it fits into the fabric of this community. 
more so than just talking about it at the table, because then you'll get a better understanding of what they're trying to do. And it's not Waterside 28 years ago. It's something totally different. We still have to be sensitive to the existing very, very businesses, much so. the existing small businesses. To, to not negatively impact anybody that's worked in the city. And, and, and I said, to give them a carte blanche. You know, no, it's, it's not, not get, it's again, not, I'm, I'm not for that. All I'm saying is there's a process. Uh, you, there, there, there's a community of folk that feel like it would negatively impact business up and down Granby Street. Uh, I think it would do a, uh, absolutely the opposite. I think it would breathe life into Granby Street. I think it would bring bring brand new money into this city from a retail standpoint as well as from a commercial standpoint. So all I'm saying is that I would hope that we will allow them to come to the table and show us models and not just rely on what we think, but look at the data to, as we move forward and, and, and make decisions as it relates to this at the end of the day. I agree with you. Um, I think that we, and, and I also agree with Andy, I think that the financial aspect of it where the city is concerned is very important, as well as making sure we have um, local businesses incorporated. But when you have professionals and when this is what they do every day for a living, we can't tie their hands because what we're asking them to do is something new, it is something different, and it is something that's going to basically take Waterside off of life support. and you know, let it breathe and live and grow on its own. So I, I think we're kind of all saying the same thing, but I, I totally agree with you in that we need to make sure that we don't, we're not so restrictive. We don't want to give them carte blanche, but we don't want to be so restrictive that um, the project doesn't work. Well, I thought the decision hadn't exactly been made yet. And I, you know, so I'm, I'm not prepared to say what I'm going to do for the Cordish, I'm prepared to talk in a, in a work uh, study plan and we'll listen to exactly what Andy is talking about and Paul's talking about and then we'll decide at the end of the day whether we go ahead. And I um, am not prepared for a rush to judgment here. I mean, we either do it right or I think we don't do it and we pull back and we look at it. But um, I, you know, I think Marcus has done a good job of um, uh, summoning up many good plans, but now I think it's time for us to figure out if that's going to work for us. So for, for I think that's, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're there. That we're, right. You guys are already talking about what you're going to let them do. I'm not sure we're there yet. The process, well, the process was he was to bring back, that, that's why I asked in the last meeting, where this was, whether or not this was going to come to a formal vote. You know, and obviously this is going to come to a formal vote. Right. That's why I asked what, what is the process? So I don't want to sit on this for 90 days or another year. No. So somebody's got to come up with a process that we can all agree to work from and be able to, you know, have the manager be, be able to go back and be able to say that, look, I made my recommendation to this body. Now, this body is going to deliberate over this for what? The next, what, the, the, uh, the next uh, work session? June, <coughs> July? Well, we ought to map something out that we can right. all agree with, and, and no one. I mean, we need. It needs to be timely. But we something, but uh, I agree. We don't want to rush. I think there's a sweet spot here for everybody. Um, there, there's a lot. Wait a minute. There's a lot of. Um, uh, we have to go back and look at exactly what the quarters plan has in it. I've been part of some some efforts in the past where we have overpromised and undelivered on projects. I'd like to be a part of an project one time where we sort of under promised and over performed <laughs> I mean, and wait, wait 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 okay and then I mean I, I really would I would like to you know see what the expectations are around the room for something there I'm really uh, I would like to be very careful about how public space is managed and this this place has a very special uh, our community has a very special relationship with Waterside and they're going to want to be able to you know have full you know that it ought to be available to the public in the, in the future in a way that it is you know, in, in some form now, but I, but I also understand completely that there has to be, there have to be, I mean, that this building also has to work as an economic unit, that it has to, you know, they have to have a return 
in order to come in here and make an investment. So I think we'll get where we want to be. We just got to have those discussions. Anthony, I'm sure you have one perfect vision of what you think this thing ought to be. No, it's not The rest about, of us aren't it, there it's, yet. It's not about me. At the end of the day, we rushed the manager. We, we, we talked about this. Uh, we, we wanted the manager to bring us something in in December. I mean, you as well as I, we said, you know, when, when are we going to when are we going to come up with something with Waterside? You know, when is the process? You know, so we put pressure on the manager to come up with, you know, tell us what you want to see happen with Waterside. And so now you guys say, well, let's hit the brakes. Nobody's you know? saying hit the brakes. Well, excuse me, I'm asking for something definitive as it relates to a process that we can live with. That's what we're we talking about. one chance we're to do this right. Chance. So you, but you knew that a year or two ago when we start, when we were talking about it, but you were saying, you know, let's right. do something with water. Okay, okay. let's be definitive. Okay. Let's set okay. up a work study. I mean, uh, time to get together. Let's figure out where we go from there. I'm not talking about a long time. That's why I asked if there was some time sensitivity. I think not to June. We ought to try to put decision. I think I mean, we've got a budget ahead of us. We've got a lot, of, a lot of things on the table here. Can you get the information such as what um, Andy asked for by a June work session? We have, yeah. Maybe we can put together some time in May where we can all sit down and have, you know, I don't know that it needs to take a whole month before we can get here. I know we, we do have the next, um, we have an election next week and we have a public hearing on the budget on the but the second, and then, then we're not here. Then we have a budget hearing on the ninth, right? I mean, I mean a budget eighth. workshop here on the eighth, and then we don't work on the. We're not here on the fifteenth. So on the twenty-second, maybe we could come in uh, a couple hours early on the twenty-second that evening and and talk about Waterside and give you or, and talk about the proposal. You can get us some information by then, and then we ought to be you know moving down the line. I, I do want to come back to this notion that. I do think that the hotel conference center uh, discussion ought to be ought to be a complete ought to be a follow-on to what we talk about here because everything's got to work together. Yeah, I, and I agree. And I think that <coughs> one of the things that I don't know is I know that past councils have set funds aside for that, and through taxes that have been collected downtown. And uh, I'd like to know where we are, how much we've collected, what debt load that. Uh, can handle um, okay. what the projection of collections of that would be in the future, Marcus. So I think that should go hand in hand with where uh, whatever we're looking for, because I do believe ultimately. I don't know about the scale of this project and whether or not it, you know the region or the city, the city or the region could support it. That being said, uh, if it is going to go hand in hand, I can understand how you cross market it. Uh, with the remainder of downtown, and if we have the money set aside that was previously set aside by law, uh, by ordinance with the conference center, then that's something that can work hand in hand. I would just like to see how that happens. It doesn't take me a long time to figure that out. I can, I can call through that fairly quickly. I just want to know that information. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh, thank you, uh, Marcus. I think you've done a nice job of getting here this morning. Um, we're going to get something to eat, is that right? And then we'll come back and, um, and we have, what, the Harris Teeter presentation.